honestly, diversity was never a complaint I ever had of the original series. Look, it's a glimpse into this particular group and their group is not very inclusive. And that's fine. Not everyone's group is. Not every show needs to be, in my humble opinion. And child, when you introduce black characters, you do not need a neon flashing sign saying they're black. What's up? It's Nikki. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be reviewing episodes one and two of the new HBO series and just like that. The Sex and the City spinoff show. Long awaited? Unnecessary? I don't know. Let's get right into it. Now, I have always been a huge fan of the original Sex and the City series. I was excited when I heard about this spinoff. The original Sex and the City followed four friends, Carrie, Samantha, Miranda, and Charlotte. Miranda was always my personal fave, but I loved all of the ladies. Now, the current series, the spinoff, and just like that, is centered on 50-something women. The series now follows three friends, Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte. I feel like they have an opportunity to really create something groundbreaking. I want to see a series with older women, mature women, being sexy and living their life and having careers. But for me, this is not starting off very promising at all. The banter just don't hit like it did on the original series. The dialogue, my God, the dialogue is so atrocious. And of everyone we could bring back from the original series, child, what the heck y'all bring back, Bitsy? I mean... Let's be for real. <laughs> so we start off with Charlotte obnoxiously pushing Carrie to come to her daughter's piano recital. After Carrie keeps saying she cannot make it, she has plans with the Big, her husband. Nah, parents, child, can y'all just please accept the fact that your kids are not as big of a deal to other people as they are to you. They are not as important, special, entertaining, funny, whatever they are to you, to other people. They your child. Yo, I love my friends, but I am not sitting through two hours of kids playing the dang piano. Sorry, I'm just not. <laughs> I feel like I didn't like how there's pretty much no growth. You could copy and paste season one Charlotte here, and it's just exactly the same. In my opinion, Carrie has never really had any real growth either, but... I always like Charlotte, always like Carrie, but it feels like the characters have turned into caricatures, which is why when Carrie kept saying we can't stay who we were over and over again, I don't know why she kept saying it. It was a little comical. So much of this episode was just so cringeworthy. What was with the freaking awkwardness of Miranda's first day of class? Like, what was that? That was so just not needed. The pronouns, the braids, the ages, just all of it. What the hell are y'all doing to my show? What the hell are y'all doing to my characters that I love? I have never seen Miranda be like this. Like, what the hell was this? Then the podcast, Lord Jesus, that goddamn podcast with Carrie, just throwing in all the gender, non-binary, etc., the politics, I don't know. It's like Sex in the City went from all the way over there to all the way over here. I remember when I first saw the promos for And Just Like That, and I saw a comment that said, And Just Like That, Sex in the City discovers people of color. And that is how I feel about all of this. Suddenly, they're trying to be woke. I have never heard them say words like patriarchy, non binary, etc. on Sex in the City ever. I don't know. It's just. All way too out of place and forced and on the nose and trying way too hard. None of it feels authentic. It doesn't feel like a natural evolution because, I mean, the show did start in the 90s. But this just doesn't feel like a natural evolution. Just give us the nostalgia. I don't know. Y'all, I hate this dang podcast. I hate it. I have no clue why the hell Carrie Bradshaw would ever be a part of anything like this. I did not like the male co-host. He was obnoxious. I do not like the host and Carrie's boss, Shay Diaz. I could care less about her character at all, really. There was nothing funny or fun about the podcast. The wokeness, woke moment button. What the heck was that? Like, for real, what, what was that? And why are we acting like Steve is a 100 years old, child? He only 50. Like, for real, that's still young. My mom is older than 50. She like 55, and they done aged Steve more than my mama. 
I don't want to just trash this series. I really don't. I have so much love for Sex in the City. I like the scene with the long line for the women's restroom and the no line for the men's restroom. And Miranda goes to the men's room and sees a guy walk in. She just is normal. Like, hey, I have definitely gone to the men's room before. Yo, why is there, like, never a line for the men's room? I am very perplexed by that. Now, Miranda was always my personal favorite character. Definitely a lot of growth with Miranda. Still very likable, but cha Miranda as a mom to a teenage son, what is they doing? Child, I cannot. Let me tell you something. I am the most progressive thinking, open person I know. And ain't no way in hell my child have a sex in my goddamn house. Point blank in the period. And just like that, I would be busting heads wide open. I wish my son would. I would knock that little nigga senses. You do not have sex where you don't pay no bills at. That's what I would be telling my son. Child, you know what? It was just disrespectful. Like, I'm getting angry at a son that I ain't even got. I just feel like the ish was so disrespectful. Now, my biggest, well, my biggest gripe is the lack of Samantha, but I'll get to that later. My biggest gripe with the start of this series, besides how god-awful the writing is, is the dramatics. Why did we kill off Mr. Big? Why the heck did we start with such a dark and dreary tone? Did Chris North not want to be a part of the show and just agree to do one episode? Like, what was the logic behind, like, this decision? And why was Carrie just sitting there holding him? Girl, call an ambulance! I mean, they not gonna get that in time, but still... Child, the dramatics, I could not, like, why did they think it was a good idea to start the show off so freaking depressing? Why is there death? Why is there a death of a main character? And other than when Miranda's mother died, the deaths on Sex in the City were never depressing. Child, the funeral for Mr. Big, that scene, like, I don't know, it just wasn't the vibe. It starts... Like, who starts a show so depressing unless it's that kind of show? The issue was just so downtrodden. All the over-the-top from Charlotte was annoying. Child, she was crying more than Carrie. Girl, your husband is alive. Okay, I want to say something positive. Susan Sharon looked really good. Better than before, actually. I enjoyed her a lot more than I enjoyed much of the first two episodes, child. I also like the flashback scene of when Carrie first met Big. That was cute to put that in there. Now, my biggest gripe with this new series is, well, you know what? It's not a gripe. It's just a disappointment as a fan. No, Samantha. Let's just talk about that. Now, I have no clue why Kim Cattrall did not sign on for it and just like that. I'm not hip to the behind-the-scenes stuff. I do know that her and Sarah Jessica Parker, like, always didn't like each other or had some kind of rift. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not really hip to it, but I do hate not having Samantha. I hate not having that original for like dynamic and friendship, but you know what? I think I would be just fine with no Samantha if I did not hate the story they have concocted for why she's not here. I don't like how they have written her out of the show. So apparently Carrie fired Samantha as her publicist and Samantha then fired Carrie as her friend and ran to London. First of all, Samantha has always been a successful publicist since season one. She did not need Carrie Bradshaw as her client. Also, for me, it was the friendship. This show is about the friendship. I don't like the writers marring that friendship. The friendship amongst the four girls has always been the steadfast, constant, unbreakable thing about Sex and the City. I remember... After Aiden finds out Carrie cheated with Mr. Big and he leaves her and Carrie says, it's hard to find people who will love you no matter what. I have been lucky enough to find four. That might not be what she said verbatim, but that's the gist of it. That line for me is the essence of Sex in the City. And the character of Samantha proved time and time again how loyal she was and how much she valued her friendship with the ladies, especially Carrie. I always felt like Samantha and Carrie were the closest of all four girls. Samantha was the most forgiving, the most non-judgmental. I do not see her flipping out because Carrie didn't need her as a publicist. And let's say they did fall out. Ain't no way on earth, heaven, or hell. Samantha is not getting on the first flight and coming to be there for Carrie at Big's funeral. Ain't no way.
And for Carrie to say, I thought I was more than just a check to her child, the nerve. That was a slap in the face. The writers of the show might not remember, but I remember when Samantha offered to do PR for Carrie. And Carrie was like, I can't afford you. And Samantha did it anyway. Look. I get it. Kim Cattrall did not want to come back as Samantha, so they had to do what they had to do. And the show would be fine without Samantha, but I just feel like they could have come up with something that made more sense and did more justice to the character of Samantha Jones and to the girl's friendship. I would have preferred if Samantha had died a few years ago. The cancer came back or something. It just would have made more sense than this. Now, don't have us at her funeral. Don't have the girls crying or just finding out she died. That's depressing. We don't need depressive. But write it where she passed a few years prior to where they are picking up at. Is this better than that second Sex in the City movie? Yes. Both movies were flawed, but the last one was on another level. I enjoyed the first movie. I pretend like that second one just don't exist. Nah, look. I get that they want to mirror the current times. I get that they want to include demographics they have previously ignored. I just feel like they could have done a better job of it. I do think it fits Miranda's character to care about social issues. She was always that character on the show out of all the girls. She was the most socially conscious. I do get the storyline of the well-meaning, no ill intention white person who puts their foot in their mouth. It just doesn't. It just wasn't done well, in my opinion. And it does not fit Miranda's character. Why did they make her so awkward and make it seem like she ain't never talked to a black person a day in her motherfucking life? <laughs> she had a relationship with Blair Underwood. And when Samantha dated the chef who was black, no, his, his sister was the chef. But anyway, when Samantha dated a black guy and the ladies interacted with him and his sister, etc., no one was awkward or weird. I get that we have a new title for a reason. This is not Sex and the City. This is the little baby birth from Sex and the City. It's a spinoff. And I get that. And I was completely on board and excited when I heard about the show. I pictured stories surrounding mature women and just getting something fresh and new and groundbreaking. But that is not what we got so far. I love the idea of a show about mature women. It is a demographic that personally I feel is ignored. But the focus on their age was excruciating. Child, y'all are in y'all 50s. Y'all are not old. Just please stop harping on the age thing. I really hope things go up from here. I really want to have a show centered on mature female friendships and lives. I want to love this show. All the women look great. Sarah Jessica Parker has aged so well. I love the gray hair on Miranda. She looks so good. Me and my cousin talk about how we're going to embrace our gray and not dye our hair when we get older. I have a ton of gray already. I started getting gray hair in my late 20s, child. So the widow storyline, the married husband dies, never thought you'd be single again storyline, the going back to school at an older age, the learning to navigate as times change, etc. storylines. All of these can be really great storylines, but we need some good writing. On the original series, the ladies... Kind of lived in their little bubble, I'll just say. So it would be nice for the ladies to evolve and to get some authentic glimpses of a broader New York City and some great nuanced characters of color. But look, diversity should not have to be forced, and that's what it feels like on this show. And honestly, diversity was never a complaint I ever had of the original series. Look, it's a glimpse into this particular group and their group is not very inclusive. And that's fine. Not everyone's group is. Not every show needs to be, in my humble opinion. And child, when you introduce black characters, you do not need a neon flashing sign saying they're black. Just introduce them as full characters with more of an identity than just being black. I am confused as to the tone of the show and what they are aiming to accomplish. And just like that is missing the heart, the emotion, the comedy, the witty dialogue, the clever dialogue of Sex and the City. But I have high hopes and I think they'll hit their stride and find their footing. I hope they do. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my content, make sure you hit like on this video. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts on, and just like that, the Sex and the City spinoff so far. Did you love it? Did you hate it? 
if you want to go on this journey and discuss the series with me episode for episode, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification. I will be uploading every week to talk about the show. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.